Welcome to another video here on understanding crypto. Every other day on this channel, I try my best to bring you crypto in the easiest way possible on the internet. If this is your first time here, click the like button and subscribe to the channel with your notifications on so that you do not get to miss any other value packed video like this one. Now, I'll try to make this video as short as possible. Now, um, I was looking at Terra Luna. This is Terra Luna Classic right here. We're going to go through Terra Luna, a quick update on Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, the S&P and uh, old coin market. We're going to see if maybe we have some sort of old coin season coming. Now, as we can see from Terra Luna right here, what we can notice is that uh, Luna appears to be in a bullish divergence. Now, this can be better observed on the three day time frame, but even here on the daily time frame, we can see that price has a lower uh, cl candle close down here. Whereas the RSI is having a higher high up here. So this is a divergence right here and it's a bullish one. And you can, this is the stochastic and this is the RSI. And you can see the same thing happening on the RSI. Now on the three day time frame, this is clearer. So you can see it happening right here like so. This on the stochastic, you can see that. And uh, this also on the RSI right here. So this lower low right here, this lower low is not accompanied by a lower low on the stochastic or on the RSI. This is probably nothing, all right? But uh, yeah, it's just worth a look. Now, if we go to the S&P, I sent this uh, picture some time ago. That was like uh, some hours ago in the Discord and Telegram group. If you're not in the Discord or Telegram group, use the links in the description to um, find your way to the groups. We do have some trade signals and uh, you can always ask questions in the chat and we all talk about it. All right, so we can see that there is a bearish divergence here on the S&P 500 and this is on the yearly time frame. So it's a massive one. It's a massive bearish divergence. If the S&P actually comes back down to this level, it will mean it will mean a 63% drop, which is somewhat closer to the uh, 1929 crash, which is uh, actually 86%, as you can see from here. So I think we can have something similar uh, to happen around this region right here. So we can see that this uh, divergence started in the dot com, actually started in the dot com right up to 2021. And then if you actually take, uh, if you take, and this is on the yearly time frame, yes. If you take this, let's go to the monthly time frame, monthly, monthly time frame. If you take your Fibonacci, because we always use Fibonacci to look at some of this stuff. If you take your Fibonacci from the lowest candle close here, so lowest monthly candle close here to the all time high, all time high right there in 2021, you will see something very interesting here. You will see that the uh, C19 crash actually retested the 0 0.618 of your FIB. So this dot com crash sits just right at the 0 0.786 FIB at that neckline. So in my opinion, this is where we will be coming back to. This is where we will be coming back to. And I had this uh, painted, uh, I had this target uh, kept right here. So I think this thing will eventually come back down here. If you even go to the yearly time frame, you will notice that we have a bearish engulfing candlestick formation on that yearly time frame with that divergence. This is the bearish engulfing candlestick formation. And it is the first bearish uh, engulfing candlestick since uh, the 2008 financial crash. So I think that's where we're headed. If we go to the daily time frame, you will see that uh, I still think we should come up to this $4,300, $4,400 mark. Why do I think that? Because as we dropped from the all time high right here, we started to descend into and uh, into a descending broadening wedge, which is somewhat similar to the ascending broadening wedge on Bitcoin. Now, if you look at the descending broadening wedge, you can just come right here. 
and then you will see the structure where I said we have now I've left all of these forecasts in the discord group uh, I was saying right here without this drop this drop did not occur I was saying that the S&P will have to hold this region right here to go back up to the uh, $4,300, $4,400 area. Now, what I was looking at there was the AB equals to CD pattern, which is taken from this lowest candle close at uh, 3521 to uh, 4000 up here. So, if you take that and you put at this second uh, candle close, this second retracement level right here, that should be taking you that should be taking you up to the four thousand three hundred four thousand four hundred dollar region and if we take fibonacci we will see that that will be putting us inside the golden uh pocket area so that's between the 0 0.5 to the 0 0.618 but ideally i would be taking my golden pocket between the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.65 this area Okay, so that is your retracement and then you start to move back to the upside. And as we can see from here, the retracement down here actually gave us a double bottom. So you see the double bottom formation actually happening here. And that is the retracement of the breakout of this descending wedge. I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that. I hope this is not just too compacted. So if we take these out, Let's just take all of them out. Okay, cool. Now, we have the descending wedge like so. If we take the descending wedge, descending broadening wedge, it goes like so. We will not try to be too accurate with the price targets right there. So you, this is your descending broadening wedge. If you invert the chart, that is what we are seeing. Now, this again is what I think we are going to see with Bitcoin. If you go to the Bitcoin chart on the weekly time frame, you will see the same structure. This same structure. I've talked about this several times. Now, this same structure. I've said that if you see a, an ascending broadening wedge, it would look like so. Now, let's not try to be too perfect with the targets right there. This, you will see this uh, same type of structure. Now, this is what we are seeing on the S&P, but it's just that it's the inverse. So it's the descending broadening wedge. Now, the ascending broadening wedge, I've said we will have some points from here, from here. So we have like three points. Sometimes it can be four. And then we have the bounce up that fails to go above the neckline of the all time high right here and then plummets now plummeting to the target of the uh the entire wedge structure so that is what we are seeing actually with the s and p right now so that is the same type of structure that we are seeing here you see the bounce 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 here bounce go up fail to go above this one and then plummet, plummet to where? This thing will be headed for this target. It will be headed for this target to here. You have a push to the downside, retracement of the move and a push to that direction. Um, so to where will this go? It will go by virtue of this distance of the initial move. So you have one, two, three. Yes, that's what we are seeing here. One two, three. Now, between this uh, move from here to here, it doesn't just mean that it's just going to do straight like this. It has to maybe have some type of retracement up down here before eventually coming back here. But the general thesis of this movement is that you expect it to come down to this region. So that is that with the S&P and that is what we would expect if we invert the chart we expect that this thing will go to the upside by this virtue. So it will go up by itself. All right. Now, if we go to uh, Bitcoin, if we go to Bitcoin, the Bitcoin chart, again, friendly reminder from the all time high, you have the breakout of that descending, broadening, descending um, 
descending wedge. Yes, descending wedge from the all time high. This is the weekly time frame on Bitcoin. So you have your breakout right here. I've been updating about this on the Discord uh, group. When BTC even plummeted down to here, I was still informing that BTC is still above this downward sloping trend line from the all time high. So there is nothing to worry about so long as BTC is above this uh, downward sloping trend line. Now we see that BTC actually closed the weekly candle above the 200 weekly MA right here showing real strength that the bulls are actually handling the situation correctly. But just slightly above uh, that uh, 200 weekly MA sits anywhere around $25,000. So naturally you would want a retracement of that moving average to confirm that this was a positive move to the upside. Now on this channel I've been saying that BTC may actually head higher than most people anticipate. Yes, everybody wants to short at 30k and their anticipation is BTC is going to crash from 30k down to 10k. Now if it does crash to, to uh, 10k, good, we will just buy. Yes. However, I think it just cannot be that easy. So I started to look and I wanted to see a point where this thing is actually telling me that uh, it could go higher. Now, if we take from here, if we take from here down to this region right here, yes and so we are looking for the first candle closes. First candle close right here will give us our first target. So you take that from here to here and you put like so. That is giving you 31,800. I've been talking about 31,900, 900, yeah, 31,900. And I've been saying that this could very well be that this is the first target. And after the first target, you have a very high chance of price rejecting that area and plunging back to the downside. Which is why if, uh, if I didn't have any Bitcoin now, I would not be buying it now because we are very, very, very close to a point where it can easily reject. Not only do we have the uh, $31,800 uh, mark right here, which it could reject from, we also have the 100 uh, moving average right here. Now, a lot of people out there say that all these moving averages, all of these things are just, you know, retail investor stuff and... What gets me, uh, what, what's funny to me is we are all retail traders. You know, if you are trading for yourself, you are a retail trader. So I hear that and I understand where they're coming from. And the entire thing is just for what you understand the most and what works for you. Yeah. When I talked about 20K, it was all about this moving average. It was all about this patterns and stuff. So it's all about what works for you. If you understand this better, fine. You work with it and you get better at it. Yeah. All right. So we also uh, so we see the 31K mark here and everybody is planning to short at this region. Now, if we do see a retracement down to 25K and move to this level right here, there's a very high chance that we break it. But if we do go there first, then high chance we are coming back to 25K. So if I didn't have any Bitcoin at all, I would be buying around the 25 to 24K mark. Now we will go to the intraday to actually see um, to what exact level can we go uh, to the downside from here. And then uh, we will see what is best to do. But I was looking at this at the, um, from the higher time frames, and I was like, all right, so what are we missing? How high can Bitcoin go? Because, uh, you know, the market cannot give this to everybody. 80% of people in the crypto space call this the Sockers Rally. Everybody, I also call it the Sockers Rally. I know that this, is, this thing is fake. All right. It's fake. But how high can it go? Actually, how high can this thing go? It cannot go to a million. It cannot go above the all-time high and go to 100k this year. It can't. Well, maybe it can. There is always this 1% of maybe it can. But, well, that's not something anybody will be betting on. But how high, realistically, how high can Bitcoin go? You need to look nowhere else than the structure. This structure is a descending wedge. This 31k mark is just the first target of that wedge. 
What's the second target? And do we have any confluence at that region? Now, the second target is the widest opening of the wedge. And so the widest opening of this wedge will be this right here. So if you take from here, candle close here, let's not try to be too perfect so that we don't waste much time and we put it there. That's giving us anywhere around 46K. Now, if I was very, um, it's not 46K. Let's try to do this perfectly, actually. It's not 46K, it's 47. So it's somewhere around up there. If you take that and you put that exactly at the candle, it's anywhere around 47,700. Yes, around here. 47,700. So those are the two targets of this exit. So you see, this is a classic exit right here. Uh, for those of you who were in my live video the other day, you saw me do this. Now, uh, I also have my uh, YouTube Shorts channel. So Understanding Crypto Shorts. Uh, that is where I post all my TikTok videos, yeah? So if you are not on TikTok, you can always get my uh, videos, my short-formed videos there on Understanding Crypto uh, Short. I will leave the link to it in the comment section and in the description. All right, so we have the 47K mark right here, but what is confirming this structure? What is confirming this structure? If we zoom out to the, uh, on the weekly time frame, we're zooming out and we take this right here, we take this right here from this pandemic lows, put this there, and then you take this from the top to the all time high and this is where the 3k target actually comes into play if you've watched my video on 3k you can check it in the channel if we put an inverted chart here you will know that uh, what you usually want from any rally or dump you want a push a retracement and another push to the upside ideally Ideally, you would want that retracement at the 0 0.618 of that movement. All right. So the 0 0.618 of this particular movement will give you your uh, target for the rebound here before the push back to the upside. Now, this is uh, when the move is to the upside. To the downside, you want to push down a retracement 0 0.618 and then a continuation. How far down will that go will depend on the initial move here. Yes, so this is your initial move. You want a retracement of that initial move, gather much momentum and continue down to the uh, initial moves target. Now, if we are to factor that in right here on Bitcoin, then we are taking this from here. We are taking this from here. We take our 0 0.618 right here. So this is the all time high actually, because uh, this is an inverted chart. You take this from the all time high, push to the up to the upside, which is actually the downside in the, in the regular chart. And then that's it. Now, if we invert this chart, so ideally the move should be like so. Push to the upside, retracement to 0 0.618 and a continuation of the initial move. If you invert the chart, look what we got. Look where the 47K target is pointing at. You remember this target? This one, the 47K target, which we took from here, which we took from here, this 47K target, which is the second target of the descending channel, is actually pointing us to the 0 0.618. This is why I will not sell until Bitcoin comes up here. If Bitcoin does not come up here, I will just huddle. I will just huddle. Except we have other signs like maybe Shiba Inu pumped for a week, and XRP went crazy, all altcoins went crazy, then I will start to consider that maybe we will actually dump from the first target right here. Because these are the first, these are the key places where we have to pay attention. You have to understand that each time I say I'm going to sell here or I'm not going to do this, other things can influence what I will do 
uh, when that thing happens. If we do come here to 47K and BTC, um, you know, pumped up to 47K and altcoins didn't even pump at all, then there's no need selling. Well, there's no need to sell if you're not in profits. Yes, you just hold and uh, yeah, it will be the way it will be. So uh, right here is where I think um yeah that's where i think uh, is the best point to actually run away this is the point where i will be running away so we see that the move to the downside if this move if this move is to actually work accordingly with uh the fractal that we are talking about then this will be actually working like so that is taking you to eleven thousand dollars so it will be somewhat like so clone this and you put this here and then you have a move that looks like so so that's your move actually that's your actual move now why do we think this will go to 3k if it ever went down here because because going down here has broken this trend line when it breaks this trend line, it will be headed for the ultimate target here. This is where real pain is. This is where majority of all the liquidity in this market will be swept. This is where everybody will cry. This, because if we do ever, ever go up to this level right here, the euphoria that we will have at this level will be crazy. And you will have all sorts of reasons why we went up here. But no, we saw it before it happened. That's just it. We saw it before it happened. So my thesis is, if BTC does not go up here, I will not sell. If BTC bounces at uh, 31, 31,900 or 800 or anything of the sort, we will seek to see if there was any major uh, signs of a big reversal. All right, we will seek to see if there is anything of that sort so that um, we know what the next move might be. But ultimately, this is the ideal zone where I will probably just run away from this market. I will run away from the crash that is to be bestowed upon us. Because this move on the S&P 500 right here is what I think is actually a head and shoulders. You'll have your head and shoulders looking like so somewhere around four let's just say four five and then this thing comes back down like so so yeah uh, this is what i will be running away from we have no idea what will cause this type of drop we have zero clue what will cause this type of drop but the charts are warning that there is something to come something will come the charts are warning the charts are warning btc is overvalued on the weekly on the weekly time frame it is overvalued so the rsi here is still going to that overvalued region so uh yeah this is not something that i would like to uh what i would be watching to 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 see here i would like to see some sort of um bearish divergence on the weekly time frame if ever btc gets up to this region i would like to see like a bearish divergence on the weekly time frame i would want to see old uh coins like meme coins rallying i would like to see people saying it's going to 100k and all of that i would like to see euphoria if all of that ticks my boxes, then I will sell and run away. Even if you just take this from here, if you just take this from here to here, which we have rightfully done by uh, keeping it sticky uh, here, and you put a horizontal line from that region, you're targeting this double bottom stop. And as you remember, I've been saying that between 12K and 9K, that's the ideal zone for accumulation. 3k 7k are like um you know the best thing that could ever happen actually but between 12 and 9k that's the ideal zone for accumulation if this thing closes up here if it closes a weekly uh, candle below this trend line then that's it it's lights out it's just going to crash badly
if BTC instead goes from here and comes down to like 14k if BTC did this before going up and consolidating here I would be buying yeah I would be buying of course I will still allocate for a 3k uh, possibility and a 12k possibility but my thesis strongly depends on BTC going up without coming back down for any sort of retracement down here if it did come down here I will just buy and wait yeah that will be the worst case scenario so in either ways I'm just winning yeah the only way that it goes against me is that it comes to 47k and uh, for some reason I sell and it rockets to 100k yeah which is far from the realms of possibility but it's just possible everything is possible so if we go to the intraday time frame if we go to the four hourly you would see what I was looking at on the four hourly go to the four hourly we see that the four hourly is looking for some sort of retracement at this stochastic all right so let's look at this we see that there is some sort of double top trying to form uh, at this region right here has the daily candle closed Yes, the daily candle has closed. Well, let's look at the daily time frame. Now, on the daily time frame, you will see this is called a topping tail. So this is actually showing us that institutions are selling here. You can see the same type of candlestick formation right here, which is a shooting star. You will call it a shooting star. But uh, the candlestick itself, the red one, is called a topping tail. If it's to the downside, it will be a bottoming tail, like this one. I think we also had something like that at 15k no we didn't all right so that is uh, what we are seeing there and uh, it's actually actually showing you that people many people got hyped here and uh, there is a very high chance of price reversal back to the downside from current levels now if price is to reverse to the downside again I'll be looking for that uh, 25k retest now if that were to happen you will see this go into your regular double top now it doesn't mean that you can't have a spike up to 25 to uh, 29k or anything so this would be even the triple top yeah so if you have something like this you'd still be considering a move down to 25k so we are targeting the candle closes there if you put that like so are we online there yeah we are coming back down to the 200 ma right here and if we're around 25k 24 800 yeah so that is very well possible let's see if we have anything with the fib giving us that level the FIP is telling us that price can come as low as uh, 25k and even 23,900. But I would like to have uh, like a prediction, like uh, price actually showing us that it can go to such levels. But for now, I would have to believe that price will retrace back anywhere to 25k. That would be what I would believe um, as of now. I wouldn't think that um, you know it could just as well go back up you know but I wouldn't be buying here that that's not what I'll be doing I, I really would not be buying here because uh, that topping tail that we saw on the daily time frame is simply telling us that uh, institutions are selling this is what we saw even the first time that we went to 25k here this one you can see it happening around this regions right here this is your bearish pin bar pattern classic bearish pin bar pattern when you see this type of candlestick formation that's the bearish pin bar pattern telling you that selling pressure is coming and it will come now if you told that to anybody here this is on the daily time frame the massive crash actually came uh, one two three four five six days later so it's just like almost a week before you saw a massive crash to the downside 
So you shouldn't be surprised if it's the same thing that we see right here. Saying that it will go down does not mean that it's just going to go down immediately. No, it may consolidate here before moving to the downside. Note that the consolidation will mean a rise in altcoin price because uh, as BTC consolidates, most investors get bored and go to speculate on alts. I've mentioned, I've said this many times on the channel. This is also the topping tail right here. And uh, you see a crash to the downside. I'd like to call these just dips because crash to me means something like so. So um, if I wasn't invested in uh, Bitcoin, I wouldn't be doing that now. Yeah, even though the daily time frame does suggest here a move to the upside, I think this thing could just turn around and consolidate like so before eventually heading up. So if you have been on this channel for some time, then yeah, even up till now, you are in mega profits because we actually made mention of buying when BTC was at like uh, 21K, 20, uh, yeah, 21, I think. Yeah, 21. So let's say 21.5 you are actually 30% up on your money. So it's a good deal. Um, yeah, so that is what we'll be expecting. I would still just be expecting a retracement of this uh, movement to the upside. Now that retracement will mean that BTC will be coming back down to retest and prove to us that its move to the upside was legit. Again, this will convince everybody on the planet that BTC has actually uh, gone up and there is no way that BTC can go back to the downside. You see that we are actually having strong support coming back down, coming in at this region right here. So the region is uh, 24, 25k region. So we want BTC to prove to us that, it's going, that it is going to go up. So ideally, I would want a movement that looks like so. I wouldn't want it to just go like so because going like so will crash price and that might actually crash it harder. You'd want it to confirm the movement and then it can be sustained to the upside. The three day time frame on BTC is also overvalued. I believe that a move to the downside right here can bring this thing back to the undervalued region given that we are going to have some sort of golden cross right here with the 50 crossing the 100 MA to the upside on the three day time frame. So if we go to, uh, we were supposed to look at uh, ETH, if we go to Ethereum, we will see that I was actually looking at ETH, um, this is it right here. No, not let's look at ETH USDT because I usually send my analysis on USD. But uh, I, I think it got some people confused the other day when I talked about a fake, out, uh, a fake move to the upside. Now, on Ethereum, we can see uh, some things which I actually saw this on the two day time frame. On the two day time frame on Ethereum, we can see a classic, a textbook classic megaphone, uh, bullish megaphone pattern. And this bullish megaphone pattern can actually lead Ethereum to some higher highs. So bullish megaphone pattern on Ethereum, I think I had that on another chart or I got that deleted. Bullish megaphone pattern on Ethereum can actually lead ETH to the upside and that will be taking ETH to these levels. This is all assuming that Bitcoin consolidates at that uh, juncture, which we just uh, we which we just talked about earlier. So this could actually take ETH to around, by my calculation, before it gave me two thousand four hundred, two thousand four hundred. So I would expect Ethereum to be doing anything of that sort but here we can see the bearish divergence also painting out on the rsi right here on the rsi but also on that rsi you can see the inverted head and shoulders so be careful don't just go shorting the markets you can see the inverted head and shoulders right there and yes you can also do this analysis on the rsi and stochastic 
all of these are just emotions in the market people actually trading so when you do these analysis they they work sometimes they work and sometimes they don't that's just how the nature of trading is so uh that is that for ethereum uh, bullish divergence bullish uh, megaphone patterns usually work exactly like so you'd have a consolidation a move to the upside a pullback and a rip to the upside to be conservative about the target right here on the two day time frame you would just take this uh target you can take this target which you measured from here let's not be too exact and put here instead to have your uh, a b equals to c d pattern so you'd have this a b a is here b is here and then you have c and uh, d up here but if you put it up here if you take this and put where it escapes the structure that is telling you where if you wanted to short your stop loss should be above this level up here if we invert this chart let's see if we have anything if fibonacci can tell us anything about that structure so you have one uh you have one two three yes all right so we take from here to here and uh, to the downside but with uh, trend based fib we take this one two uh one two and three so one candle close no candle weak right here candle weak and then you put here if it escaped yeah so if it escaped this right here it should be easily headed back down to the one point uh two thousand four hundred and sixty two thousand dollar area so this is where if you wanted to short your stop loss must be above this 1.618 uh, golden ratio. So that's it for if I do think if BTC is to rally badly, if will come up to this uh, to this zone right here. But I still do think there will be a pullback pretty soon. If we go to the old coin total three total old coin market excluding BTC and ETH. Um, no, is that even it? Yeah, excluding BTC and ETH. We said this in another video. And in that video, I think we were actually around this region right here. I don't remember. Uh, we had this descending wedge, this descending trend line from the all time high. This one, which we have been saying that BTC broke out of its uh, descending trend line, but old coins have not yet broken out of. And we said that this, this descending channel right here, you see that old, uh, the old coin market has already broken out of that and retested and is on the move to the upside. So we could actually have some old season coming in uh, soon. We could actually have an old season coming. And as of now, alts that are stronger against BTC are already doing well. Not too well, but uh, yeah, they are doing well. You'd see HBAR, HBAR doing kind of well, XLM, um, ARB. So XRP, as XRP continues to do well, that will mean that all these payment coins and all these XRP people will enjoy because most of their coins will start to do well. The same people who invest in XRP are the same people who go and invest in XLM and Algorand and HBAR. So, yeah. If you're an XRP person, good for you. So, we see that... Uh, where is it? So, yeah. We see that this, which I took this... Uh, when I took this target from here, which is the first target of this descending channel when we put it up here it's actually just going back up to retest that trend line from the all-time high this breaking this trend line right here is where i think will actually set alt free to go to the upside and they will rally hard if they ever broke out of this uh trend line from the all-time high this is where i think alt are actually going to face massive resistance it's actually facing some type of massive resistance right here at the 50 moving average 50 weekly moving average with this one the red one here but i think that was going to break and it is going to go up this is where i think it's going to have 
massive resistance uh, coming in because you see that it retraced this 200 weekly moving average right here and it's starting to go up. So I think this is going to go up and I think if BTC is to top at 47K, then all the altcoin market should also be topping anywhere around um, around 600 640 billion as I calculated earlier. So if we take it from here, if we take this from here and we take candle closes, this is on the weekly time frame. They should, depending on where it actually broke out of this, um, out of this downward sloping trend line, that will determine where old coins will uh, actually top. Now, of course, they will move more violently as compared to Bitcoin. So they are on top, maybe higher than Bitcoin's top. So you will actually see some coins do a 2 to 3 to even 4x if BTC ever went to 47k and uh, its dominance, which we have to look at, and, and its dominance was dropping. Now BTC dominance, we also have um, some type of consolidation, but this this is not looking super bearish actually. I'd like for it to look bearish because uh, that's the only way that alts are going to do well. Uh, I would really hope that it doesn't break and then we would have a good old season for a retracement back here. But even if we just have a retracement back here, then we will have a better old season um, if BTC's dominance gives us the green light. All right, so um, that brings us to the end of my video. It's a total wrap up video where I just send you what you need to know, what we need to be on the lookout for. I will be looking out for this huge crash on the S&P. Um, I think this is it. This is going to be it. We have been talking about a mega crash. Everybody on media has been talking about a mega crash. I think that crash is going to come from here. So thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you did like it and uh, learned something from it. I will make sure to upload some videos soon because I'm actually preparing a tutorial lesson on how to qualify for some airdrop. So I will make sure to finish up with that and upload it pretty soon so stay tuned and have your notifications on so until the next video stay safe